Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, a huge welcome to you. And if you've been here before, you know how I feel about you. I really appreciate you being here. There are so many choices on YouTube and the fact that you chose my channel today really makes me feel very appreciative. I hope you're having fun with your jewelry making. And if you've never made jewelry and this is your first time visiting this channel, you're in the right place because I'm gonna show you step by step how to make beautiful pieces. And one of the nice things about making your own jewelry is that you can get ready for all kinds of events. We've got, let's see, we've got Valentine's, we have Easter, we have wedding season. I think that starts in May. And of course, we always have birthdays all year round. And it's so nice to be able to make a beautiful piece custom designed for whoever you want. Now, one thing I haven't done yet on this channel is men's jewelry. So that's on my to-do list for this year. Hopefully I can make some tutorials on that. But today we're going to be making a gorgeous Valentine's piece. We're going to be making that gorgeous necklace that you saw in the intro. And I made that necklace with the contents that came in GGC's treasure bag for October. And I know that's a long time ago, but if you go to her website, GGC's Treasures, I believe she still has those filigree hearts. Now, I don't know how many she has. It's probably a limited stock, but you can actually make that necklace with any pendant, really. Now, if you're not familiar with GGC's Treasure Bag, I'll leave a link down below so you can go check it out. It's not a subscription bag. It's a limited edition and she launches it every, I think every two months or so. And let me tell you guys, whenever she launches a bag, it sells out almost immediately. So if you do go to the website, make sure you sign up for notifications. So the next time she releases a bag, you'll be notified. But anyway, guys, I'm very excited about today's tutorial because it's actually a pretty easy tutorial. So if you're a beginner, you're gonna like today's video. Now, if you're advanced, hopefully you can pick up some tips. I know I always pick up tips whenever I visit other people's tutorials. One thing I've learned in this business is that you never stop learning. Now, before we get started, let me remind you that I always leave a list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. So if you scroll down, you'll be able to see it. And I'm also gonna leave a list of the tools that I'm gonna be using. And if you like my content, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. And another thing that I would really appreciate is if you could give me a thumbs up and leave some comments down below. Let me know what you think of the necklace or you can leave whatever comment you want. I want to learn a little bit about you. So maybe you can talk a little bit about yourself, what you do for a living, what kind of jewelry you like to make. I always like to hear from my viewers. I love to read your comments. I don't always respond, but I read every single one of them and I really do appreciate it. Okay, everyone, I'm very anxious to show you how to make this necklace. So let's go ahead, turn the camera around and we'll get started. Here's GGC's treasure bag. The name of this collection is Autumn Tones and it was launched in October of last year. Obviously I'm not doing an unbagging today. In a few moments I'll pull out the items that we're going to be using for today's project. But as you can see this collection was filled with gorgeous autumn colors. There were lots of gold and olive and brown and orange tones but there were also some beads that were red and that's what we're going to be using today. We're also going to be using a gorgeous antique bronze filigree heart pendant which is the perfect thing for a Valentine's necklace. But anyway, if you didn't get a chance to see this unbagging, I'll link it down below so you can go check it out. And like I said earlier, if you didn't purchase the bag, you can use items from your own stash. And I'll leave a detailed list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. So let me go ahead and pull out the items we're going to be using. And here are the items from the GGC's treasure bag. We have this gorgeous strand of opaque red glass beads that measure six millimeters in size. We also have a strand of imitation pyrite, non-magnetic hematite, and these measure four millimeters in size. We have some textured cable chain here and the links measure four by three millimeters. We also have this gorgeous antique bronze filigree heart pendant and it measures 35 by 34 by 11 millimeters. And here we have a couple of cone beads. As you can see, they're in an antique bronze color as well. And they measure 18 by eight by eight millimeters. And we also have a toggle clasp. But if you want to use a lobster claw clasp or any other kind of clasp, of course you can do that. I'm using this one because it came in the bag. And it's probably a little bit too large for this necklace, but I think it's a pretty toggle clasp and I thought I'd use it. It'll definitely make it easy to put the necklace on. So let me show you the rest of the items now. And here are the rest of the items we're gonna be using. As you can see, I have some beading wire and this one's by Beadalon, but you can use any brand. This one measures 0 0.018 of an inch in diameter or 0.46 millimeters. And it's in a gold color, as you can see. It's 49 strand, but you can use any kind of beading wire for today's project. I also have some craft wire. This one's by Beadsmith, as you can see. It's 22 gauge and it's in a bronze color. I have some seed beads. These are size 11O. And these are Toho beads and the color of this one is metallic dark bronze. I have a large jump ring here. This one's 10 millimeters in size. And I also have two smaller ones here. They're five millimeters in size. And I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and get started. Here are the beads we're going to be using for the bottom part of the necklace. I probably have more than I need, but I'll figure it out as I go along. 
So I'm going to start out by arranging some beads and I need to arrange three strands that are going to form the bottom part of the necklace. And one of the biggest challenges when you're working with such tiny seed beads is figuring out how many are going to fit a certain length. Now obviously you could line them up on a beading board if you wanted to, but that's a pretty tedious task. And I actually don't like using beading boards. I'm going to be using my magic rods for this project. And I know a lot of you don't have these. If you don't have these, don't worry because you can still make this project. You can use scrap pieces of beading wire if you want to. But I like using these because they are made out of steel. They're very sturdy and they're very thin. Plus they have these stoppers at the ends. So what I do is I bring the stoppers in and that brings the beads together and it gives me accurate measurements. I do carry these in my Etsy store if you're interested. I have two sizes. This is the nine inch length. I have another length that's longer, 12 inches. And full disclosure, I want to be totally transparent. These rods are very thin and they're actually pretty sharp. So if you're thinking about buying them, just keep that in mind. Also, these little stoppers are very small and they do loosen up with time, which is why I always include a baggie full of stoppers with every purchase. But anyway, you'll see in a few moments how handy these are. They really do come in handy, especially when you're working with seed beads. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to remove the stopper. And I'm going to start by loading some seed beads. And I think I'm going to load maybe 15 seed beads. I'm not sure yet. Because I want the ends of the strands to have the small beads. The strands are going to actually go inside the cone beads. So you don't want large beads at the ends. So let's see how many we have. I have 14. I'm going to go with 16 just to keep it even numbers. And now I think I'm going to load one of these beautiful bronze colored beads. And then maybe eight of these. And another bronze colored bead. And now another eight seed beads. So this is what we have so far. And now I think I'll load one of these red beads and another eight seed beads. And now another one of these bronze beads. And another eight seed beads. So that looks pretty good. And now another bronze bead. Another nice thing about the rods is that it's so easy to pick up seed beads. If you've ever tried picking up seed beads with beading wire, you'll see that it's very challenging and very tedious. So now I think I'll load another red one. As you can see, I have a pattern going on. I have eight seed beads in between the beads and I have two of these bronze colored beads in between the red ones. Once I arrange my three rods, what I'll do is freeze one of the frames in the video. So if you want to take a screenshot, you can. But anyways, you can see I started with 16 seed beads and then a bronze colored bead and then eight, another bronze colored bead, eight, and then a red one. And then I did eight seed beads, bronze, eight seed beads, bronze, eight seed beads, and red. So I'm going to continue doing this pattern until I get a length of about maybe seven inches. As you can see, I've loaded my beads and now I'm going to measure it before I go any further. If you'll notice, I have my little stoppers at each end and I brought the beads in so now I can get a very accurate measurement. Let's take a look. It measures about six inches. Now I did say seven inches before, but I think I'm going to stop and just leave it at six inches. These cone beads are pretty long, so it's going to add length to the bottom part of the necklace. But obviously you can make yours as long as you want to. So now what I'll do is load these other two rods and I'm going to do it off camera so this video isn't too long and I'll show you the exact amount of beads for each rod. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I've loaded all three rods and like I said, I'll leave it up on the screen so you can see exactly how many seed beads I used in between the larger beads. So this is the one that we started with. And like I said, we started with 16 at the beginning 
and then eight in between each of the larger beads. Now this one's a little bit different. I started out with 16 here on this side and then I did put eight in between the larger beads but I ended with 14. And the reason I ended with 14 is because I wanted the length to be exactly like the first one. So that's another nice thing about the rods. You can hold them up against each other like this and get an accurate measurement. Now this one's exactly the same as the one that I just showed you, but I flipped the rod over. So instead of having it like this, I'm gonna have it like this. And that way it looks a little bit more random. And like I said, guys, you can use beading wire to arrange your beads if you want to. But the thing about beading wire is that it's always curved because it comes in a spool. So it's really difficult to load the beads and then get accurate measurements unless you stretch it out on your board and tack it down or tape it down. So now we're going to load the beads onto the beading wire. And as you can see, I have three pieces here. Each one is 10 inches long. And like I said, you can make yours longer if you want to. Let's go ahead and start with one. I'm going to put a clip at the end so I don't lose the beads. You can use the bead stopper if you want to. And let's go ahead and load one of these. To offload from the rod, what you do is you hold onto this end like this, slide the stopper off, and then offload. And I like to grab several seed beads at a time. It just makes it so much easier when you can load a bunch of seed beads all at once. The rods hold the seed beads in alignment, so it's easy to offload in multiples. And these are very small beads, which can be pretty tedious to pick up. So let me keep loading these beads. As you can see, I've loaded the beads onto the beading wire and now I'm going to crimp off one end and I'm going to be using some round crimp beads for this. Let me show you how easy this is. I'm going to load the crimp bead just like that. And now I'm going to take the tail and thread it back through the crimp bead. Let me pull the end to shorten the loop. You want the loop to be pretty small. And the reason I'm using crimp beads instead of crimp tubes is because we're going to be squashing the crimp bead. We're not going to do the traditional fold over method. And the other reason is that these are pretty small. You want to use small crimp beads for this project because you're going to be hiding them inside the cone bead so you don't want them to be really big. And now we're simply going to squash that bead. So I'm going to use some chain nose pliers. I'm going to grab the bead and slide it down a little bit to shorten the loop and then squash it. Just like that. I know it's not pretty, but like I said, it's going to be hidden inside the cone bead. So now I'm going to cut off the excess beading wire. And this is what you should have. Pretty simple. And now let's slide the beads down. Here's another crimp bead. I'm going to thread it on. Bring it down just like that. Thread the tail back through the crimp bead. Shorten my loop. Make sure there are no spaces in between your beads. Like I said, you want that loop to be nice and small. You also want to make sure that your beading wire isn't twisted inside that crimp bead. It's a little difficult to see but do the best you can. So now I'm going to come in here with my chain nose pliers and squash the crimp bead. Let me cut off the excess. So now each end is crimped off as you can see. I know they're not pretty, but like I keep saying, they're going to be hidden inside the comb beads. So now I'm going to do the other two off camera and I'll be right back. 
Okay, I'm back and I've loaded all three strands and crimped them off. And now we're ready for the next step. As you can see, I have two pieces of wire here. This is the 22 gauge wire. Each piece is four inches long. I have my two comb beads and I have some other beads that I'm going to use to embellish them. So let me show you how easy this is. I'm going to go ahead and do a wrap loop. So I'm going to grab the wire about a third of the way down like this, kink it. So it's 90 degree angle. I'm going to move to this portion of my wire and I don't want the loop to be very big. I want it to be relatively small because it needs to fit inside the comb bead. And now I'm going to take the tail and wrap it around the nose of my pliers like this, flip my pliers around and continue to wrap to the back like this. And before I do the wraps, I'm going to thread the strands inside the loop. Like that. As you can see, all three are inside the loop. And now I'm going to grab that loop with some skinny pliers, just like that. I'm going to grab the tail with another set of pliers and I'm going to do a couple of wraps. And now using some flush cutters, I'm going to cut off the excess wire. And it's always good practice guys to tuck in any little end that's sticking out. Although in this case it really doesn't matter because it's going to be inside the comb bead. So this is what you should have. Pretty easy. So now what I'm going to do is braid these three strands and it's going to be a very loose braid. Let me clean up my workspace a little bit. So you want to line up your three strands and then you're just going to do a very loose braid. Of course you can make yours tighter if you want to, it's completely up to you. Let me just shift things around a little bit. So that looks pretty good to me. I don't think I want it any tighter than that. Let me just make sure it stays in place. You want to make sure those ends stay just like that. You don't want to lose the braid. I think what I'm going to do is place some plies on them like that. Here's my other piece of wire. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create a loop. And now I'm going to thread the loops of the strands inside the loop that I just created. Let me slide them inside. So there they are, as you can see. I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers. And with another set, I'm going to create some wraps. I'm going to grab the tail and create some wraps. Snip off the excess. And if you see a little end, tuck it in. So this is what we have so far. I think it's really cute. I love the distribution of the beads. So now we're simply going to thread on one of these comb beads. Just like that. And then a red one. And then a bronze one. So that's what we have so far. I'm going to grab the wire at the top of the bead like this, kink it, and I'm going to form a loop.
but I'm not going to close it just yet because we need to attach a chain. So let's do the same thing to this side now. Here's my chain. I'm going to take the end of the chain and I'm going to slide it into that loop, but I'm not going to cut the chain just yet. Let me open up this loop a little bit to make it easier. close it I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers grab the tail and do a couple of wraps and now snip off the excess and this time you definitely do want to tuck it in because you don't want anything sharp sticking out. So this end is complete as you can see. So now what I need to do is take this to the mirror, hold it up to my chest and figure out how much chain I need. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I've cut the chain that I need. Now everybody has different tastes but my necklace is going to be around 18 inches long. Like I keep saying, you can make yours as long as you want to. So now we need to attach the chain to this end. So just like before, we're going to take the chain and I'm going to slide the first link into the loop that I created. Let me open it up a little bit. And now I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail, and do a couple of wraps. And now snip off the excess, tuck in the little end. So now we need to attach the toggle clasp and the pendant. Here's my pendant and here's my large jump ring. Let me go ahead and open it up. I'm going to attach the pendant to the jump ring first and now I'm going to find the middle and slide the strands into the jump ring the best way I can. just like that and close up the jump ring really well so that's what we have so far and I think it looks absolutely adorable here's my toggle clasp and here are two small jump rings these are the five millimeter size jump rings let's go ahead and open up this one And I'm going to connect it to the chain and then the ring portion. Close it up. Let's open up this one now. And I'm going to connect it to this end and now the bar portion and close it up tell me that's not adorable 
let me just arrange my necklace so I can show you isn't this a gorgeous Valentine's necklace I think it's absolutely adorable let me move my camera down a little bit it's such a pretty piece it really is and very easy to make as you saw so now what I'd like to do is put it on and show you what it looks like so let me do that and I'll be right back Okay, I think I'm ready for Valentine's Day. I love this necklace. I think it's so pretty. I love jewelry that's either bronze or copper. I'm not a big fan of silver or gold. I do wear it from time to time, but I prefer the dark metals for some reason. I just think they're so much prettier in my opinion. I guess it depends on the beads and maybe the season as well. But anyway, guys, I think this necklace turned out really pretty. I hope you like it as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.